Saint Maria Goretti October 16, 1890 to July 6, 1902, is an Italian virgin martyr of the Catholic Church, and one of the youngest canonized saints. She was born to a farming family. Her father died when she was nine, and they had to share a house with another family, the Serenellis. Maria took over household duties while her mother, brothers, and sister worked in the fields. One afternoon, Alessandro, the Serenella's son, made sexual advances to her. When she refused to submit to him, he stabbed her fourteen times. She was taken to the hospital but she died forgiving him. He was arrested, convicted, and jailed. During imprisonment he repented. After twenty-seven years he was released from prison, and visited her mother to beg forgiveness, which she granted. He later became a lay brother in a monastery, dying peacefully in 1970. She was beatified in 1947, and canonized in 1950. Topic. Biography Topic. Early life Maria Teresa Goretti was born on October 16, 1890 in Coronaldo, in the province of Ancona, then in the Kingdom of Italy, to Luigi Goretti and Assunta Carlini, the third of seven children, Antonio who died in infancy, Angelo, Maria, Mariano Marino, Alessandro Sandrino, Ursilia, and Teresa. By the time Maria was five, her family had become so poor that they were forced to give up their farm, move, and work for other farmers. In 1896, they moved to Col Gianturco, near Pagliano and Frosinone, about 50 miles outside Rome, and then in 1899 to La Ferrer, near modern Latina and Netuno in Lazio, where they lived in a building, La Cascina Antica. They shared with another family which included Giovanni Serenelli and his son, Alessandro. Soon, her father became very sick with malaria, and died when she was just nine. While her mother and siblings worked in the fields, she would cook, sew, watch Teresa, and keep the house clean. It was a hard life, but they were very close. Topic. Maria's death On July 5, 1902, 11-year-old Maria was sitting on the outside steps of her home, sewing one of Alessandro's shirts and watching Teresa, while Alessandro was threshing beans in the barnyard. Knowing she would be alone, he returned to the house and threatened to stab her with an awl if she did not do what he said, he was intending to rape her. She would not submit, however, protesting that what he wanted to do was a mortal sin and warning him that he would go to hell. She fought desperately and kept screaming, No! It is a sin! God does not want it! He first choked her, but when she insisted she would rather die than submit to him, he stabbed her eleven times. She tried to reach the door, but he stopped her by stabbing her three more times before running away. Teresa awoke with the noise and started crying, and when Assunta and Giovanni came to check on her, they found Maria on the floor bleeding and took her to the nearest hospital in Netuno. She underwent surgery without anesthesia, but her injuries were beyond the doctor's help. Halfway through the surgery, she woke up. The pharmacist said to her, Maria, think of me in paradise. She looked at him and said, well, who knows, which of us is going to be there first? You, Maria. He replied. Then I will gladly think of you. She said. She also expressed concern for her mother's welfare. The following day, 24 hours after the attack, having expressed forgiveness for Alessandro and stating that she wanted to have him in heaven with her, she died of her injuries. Journalist Noel Crush provided a more detailed account. On July 5, in 1902, at 3 p.m. whilst Maria's mother Asunta and the other children were at the threshing floor, Serenelli who persistently sought sexual favors from the 12-year-old sick girl approached her. She was taking care of her infant sister in the farmhouse. Alessandro sick threatened her with a 10-inch awl, and when she refused, as she had always done, he stabbed her 14 times. The wounds penetrated her throat, with lesions of the pericardium, heart, lungs, and diaphragm. Surgeons at Orsenigo were surprised that she was still alive. In a dying deposition, in the presence of the chief of police, she told her mother of Serenelli's sexual harassment, and two previous attempts made to rape her. She was afraid to reveal this earlier since she was threatened with death. A third account of the assault was presented by Italian historian Giordano Bruno Guerri in 1985. He asserted that, while in prison, Alessandro stated that he did not complete the assault and Maria died a virgin. Guerri identifies the weapon as an awl rather than a dagger. 
Topic Serenelli's imprisonment and repentance Alessandro Serenelli was captured shortly after the attack, the police taking him to prison overtook the ambulance carrying Maria to the hospital. Originally, he was going to be sentenced to life, but since he was a minor at that time it was commuted to 30 years, judges even considered he was not as mature as he was expected to be for a 20-year-old, and that he grew up in a poor, neglectful family, with several brothers and relatives suffering from madness and an alcoholic father. It has also been suggested that it was due to her mother's plea for mercy that he was not sentenced to death. He insisted he had attempted to rape her several times and decided to kill her because of her refusal and desperate crying. He remained unrepentant and uncommunicative from the world for three years, until a local bishop, Monsignor Giovanni Blandini, visited him in jail. He wrote a thank you note to the bishop asking for his prayers and telling him about a dream, in which Maria gave him lilies, which burned immediately in his hands. After his release, Alessandro visited Assunta and begged her forgiveness. She forgave him, saying that if Maria had forgiven him on her deathbed then she could not do less, and they attended Mass together the next day, receiving Holy Communion side by side. He reportedly prayed to her every day and referred to her as My Little Saint. He attended her canonization in 1950. Alessandro later became a lay brother of the Order of Friars Minor Capuchin, living in a monastery and working as its receptionist and gardener until he died peacefully in 1970 at age 87. Topic beatification and canonization Maria was beatified on April 27, 1947. In attendance at the ceremony were both Assunta and Pope Pius XII. On the evening of the ceremony in St. Peter's Basilica, the Pope walked over to and greeted Assunta. She later reported, When I saw the Pope coming, I prayed, Madonna, please help me, and I felt faint. He put his hand on my head and said, Blessed Mother, Happy Mother, Mother of a Blessed. Afterwards, both could be seen with eyes wet with tears. Three years later, on June 24, 1950, Pius XII canonized Maria as a saint, the Saint Agnes of the 20th century. Asunta was again present at the ceremony, along with her four remaining sons and daughters. Alessandro was also present. Owing to the huge crowd present, the ceremonies associated with the canonization were held outside St. Peter's Basilica, in the Piazza San Pietro. Pius XII spoke, not as before in Latin, but in Italian. We order and declare, that the Blessed Maria Goretti can be venerated as a saint and we introduce her into the canon of saints. Some 500,000 people, among them a majority of youth, had come from around the world. Pius asked them. Young people, pleasure of the eyes of Jesus, are you determined to resist any attack on your chastity with the help of grace of God? A resounding, yes, was the answer. Maria's three brothers would claim that she intervened miraculously in their lives. Angelo heard her voice telling him to emigrate to America. Alessandro was reportedly miraculously given a sum of money to finance his own emigration to join Angelo. Sandrino died in the United States in 1917, and Angelo died in Italy when he returned there in 1964. Mariano said he heard her voice telling him to stay in his trench when the rest of his unit charged the Germans in World War I. He, the only survivor of that charge, lived until 1975 and had a large family. Maria's body is kept in the crypt of the Basilica of Nostra Signora della Grazie e Santa Maria Goretti in Netuno, south of Rome. It has been often reported that it is incorrupt but this is not the case. It is kept inside a statue which is lying down beneath the altar, which has been mistakenly believed by some to be its entirety. <laughs> feast day Maria's feast day, celebrated on July 6, was inserted in the general Roman calendar when it was revised in 1969. She is the patron saint of chastity, rape victims, girls, youth, teenage girls, poverty, purity and forgiveness. In art Maria is represented in art as a wavy-haired young girl in farmer clothes or a white dress, with a bouquet of lilies in her hands, and she is sometimes counted among the ranks of the Passionist order since her spiritual formation was guided by the Passionists. Both lilies and white garments are traditional icons of virginity in Catholic iconography. In media Heaven Over the Marshes is another Italian film based on her life, filmed in 1949 and directed by Augusto Giannina. Ines Orsini plays her and Mauro Matucci plays Alessandro. 
It was awarded a prize at the 10th International Exhibition of Cinema Art at Venice in 1949, as the one which contributed most to the spiritual and moral betterment of mankind. Marcel Delanois wrote a radiophonic opera, Maria Goretti, in 1953. In 2003, Maria Goretti, a Rai Italian TV movie directed by Giulio Bass, starring Martina Pinto as Maria, was acclaimed by critics. See also List of Catholic saints Incorruptibility Footnotes Topic. External links Friends of Maria Goretti Saint Maria Goretti, the little saint of great mercy Saint Maria Goretti At Saint Maria Goretti's canonization sad face, in Italian Pope Pius XII's a speech In Latin Pope Pius XII's a homily <laughs>